Hi everybody, welcome to Happy Friday for another week and another video post on the couch here. I'm really glad that you could join me. This week I'm going to be talking about scarves and headscarves. I've had a request on Twitter from at canned content and at a Flanagan for me to talk about scarves and how they are worn. Scarves have a really long and rich history. They can be traced back as far as 1350 BC to Queen Nefertiti's time when she wore them. So we've been wearing them for thousands and thousands of years. They uh, have been used in so many different ways. We wear them for so many different reasons. In colder climates to keep warm, uh, in hotter climates and in warm climates, particularly dusty climates, to keep our hair, hair, dust, wind and sand out of our face and eyes. They're worn in uniforms, uh, in the military particularly, and in sport at sporting events and for sporting teams. And we couldn't mention scarves without um, talking about religion either. Millions of people all over the world wear scarves every day, and all sorts of different religions wear them in, in, in different ways. In the last couple of years we've seen a really big resurgence in knitting amongst the craft community and younger women as well. I had a reader knit me a beautiful woolen black and white scarf a couple of, uh, maybe last year I think it was. Uh, so that, you know, that's really contributing to how we're wearing scarves uh, as well. I'm going to talk about today them in a sort of fashion sense as well. In 1837 Hermes was launched in France and they are a really classic icon of headscarves and how they're how they're worn. It's a very, they, you know, they promote a very French way of of wearing scarves, and and so we've been wearing them, you know, in a fashion sense for hundreds of years. In 1856, in Britain, Burberry was launched, and although originally they were creating trench coats to be worn that were worn throughout the First World War, they created scarves as well, and then they now have a very um, classic. British way of wearing headscarves and promoting them um, and of course their beverage check that you can see on their scarves. I'm not going to try and reinvent the wheel when it comes to headscarves and how to wear them. I'm just going to show you a few ways that I would wear them myself. I've got my hair tied back in a tight bun just so that it's easier today and I've got a few things that I'm going to use as adornment. I've got these beautiful clip-on earrings that have a clip on the back and anyone can use these. You can use them not only as earrings but to adorn your scarves as well. I've got a camellia brooch because I'm using a Chanel scarf so um, and you'll notice on the bottom it has a clip as well as the pin so that makes it really easy to use and I've got a very cool pair of sunglasses if I get around to it I'll be um, using them to create a sort of Jackie O look. I'm going to tip my head forward first of all and you want to pull the peak down towards the front. Take your two ends and tie them in a knot and you want to hit your forehead about here you're going to get um, a, a much tighter knot that will give you a bit more leverage when you're when you're tying um, your scarf pull this peak over and take your ends and just tie them like so pull that up. now you've got a few options that you can use um, you can take your ends and twirl them around and if you tuck them under this creates a really lovely um, turban style. It's a very relaxed turban look. It's not a traditional way of wearing it, but it, it's sort of an easy way to get, get those ends out of the way. You can take your ends as well, and if you tie them in a bow, you'll notice that it creates a very sort of iconic 1940s look, very Rosie the Riveter straight away. Um, women wore scarves like this in the 1940s when they sort of entered the workforce to take the place of the millions of young men that were off fighting in the Second World War. And they wore their hair like this mainly for practical reasons to keep it out. They were working in factories and with heavy machinery, doing a lot of manufacturing. Um, it's become a really classic look now and you can see it's used time and time again. Um, Christian Dior um, love this re recreating this sort of look. Um, so John Galliano in particular. Um, so you know that the, I've done this in seconds. You can see how easy it is. If I move this to the side now and have it just on the side there, I've got a sort of 1920s look happening, and this is very popular in the, with flapper flapper girls in the uh, in the 1920s. And you can see just by moving it to the side, I've created a really different look. I might take my clip-on earrings now, and if you clip these into the side, like so, 
it's a really pretty way to just adorn and adorn scarves. I think sometimes for those of us that um, have clip-on earrings lying around the house we don't know what to do with them and I often find myself pinning them onto things. It's a very cute way. You can also uh, tie keep moving around and this is another really sort of classic gorgeous way if you pull it down a bit you can wear it under your ear like this. I'm going to take my camellia now and just pin it in. Now you can pin it anywhere into the back or the bow and I've got it like that. I've used a camellia today because I'm using a Chanel scarf and if you do your research you'll be able to find out what the big fashion houses have as their sort of um, icons and what they use in their imagery. The camellia is a um, a long-standing icon at Chanel, at the house of Chanel. Um, they use it throughout a lot of their accessory collections, particularly on buttons and things like that. Coco Chanel herself um, w was kind of founded the idea of using the camellias in her collections. Um, if you are interested in Burberry and if you're interested in Hermes, I would uh, do your research because you'll find that there are adornments that you can use that will fit in um, with what, what you're using for that house. If I undo this now, you can recreate quite easily a really classic way of wearing scuff. So just pull that out and shuffle this around to the front. And I think you've got possibly the most iconic way of just wearing a headscarf. It's tied at the nape of your neck. I'll turn around here. You can do a few things here. You can tie this in a bow over the top like that and you can wear it long or you can then tie the take your ends and tie them in a bow themselves if you uh, want to wear this around to the side you can flip this around and you can wear it sort of like in a in a ponytail fashion if you like as well another really popular way in a way i may end today is to wear the headscarf torn worn torn <laughs> worn um just over your head like so and this is a classic um, British way of wearing wearing a headscarf. The Queen likes to wear her scarves like this. Um, but it was worn like this a lot in the 1950s. You might recall Grace Kelly often wore, and sometimes more delicate, um, sort of gossamer scarves, the very thin ones. If you take, and you can use anything, you use pins, clips, brooches. I've, I'm going to use this today and pin that there. You can sweep this around to one, one side, or you can also tie it under in a knot. Um, under, I might do that quickly, just under your chin. Now you have to imagine this being worn in uh, in winter with a gorgeous trench coat and the collar turned up, and you pop your sunglasses on and you've instantly and very easily created a really classic look for scarf wearing. Um, this is just a few ways that I might wear scarves myself, but if you jump online and do your research, there is plenty out there on how to wear them uh, and the different types, the history of scarves. I haven't even gone into authenticating scarves today. That might have to be for another Friday video. Thank you so much for joining me today. You can find me on Twitter. I am at Lady Melbourne, and that's where today's suggestions for the video have come from. Or you can email me and write to me. Uh, you'll find all the details on the blog. Thank you so much for joining me. In case you don't already know, I am Phoebe and you have been watching Lady Melbourne TV. See you later guys.